It is that time again where we cover a topic that the media ought to be covering or covering better and isn't. So I first actually discovered this over at the Daily Mail, believe it or not, but the title of the article kind of confused me at first. I had to read it several times because it involves transgenderism and such titles are often confusing intentionally. So this one in particular said, quote, transgender mom is jailed for 25 years for heinous, cruel, and depraved crime of forcing daughter, seven, she fathered, to take part in child porn, unquote. It's not a mom. It's not even a woman. It's a pedophilic male who happens to be the biological father of the abused seven-year-old girl. The audacity of the reporter to refer to this man, I can think of better words, as a transgender mom is unbelievable. And I mean, it cries out for vengeance. No, seriously, I, I can't even believe that someone would do that. I digress though. The individual in this case, we're going to cover this properly. The individual in this case, the biological father, his name was Matthew Voltz before he renamed himself to Marina Voltz. His seven-year-old daughter was taken by him uh, from his mother in December of 2018. There were actually four people involved in this child pornography ring. There was Matthew, again, the biological father. There was a man named Adam Romero, who goes by the name Ashley Romero, because he's also playing the drag thing. There's a guy named Sean Allen. And then there's Dulcinea Neko, I believe that's pronounced. Together, they ran their own studio, if we're going to call it that. The father, 32-year-old, ran, as he called it, a family-owned transgender pornography production studio specializing in amateur BDSM and taboo fetish content, unquote. The judge, in this case, Judge Toba, said the crime was heinous, cruel, and depraved, and commented that the child endured abuse involving a cage and a variety of sex toys. Unsurprisingly, there are connections between these people and the far left, which I would gather might have something to do with how little press this has gotten in addition to the fact that these are people who are identifying as transgender right and so for that reason you'll also see a sort of minimization of the crimes that have been committed matthew again the biological father was president of the queer student association at clark college near portland here's a tweet showing a picture of two of them two of this gang with the communist and trans activist Paul Grobman. That's a writer at Hard Drive magazine. Here's Paul and Adam, who goes by the name Ashley, making pornographic content together. So yes, they're all local far-leftist communists, also pedophiles, also transgenders. And, and by the way, can I just slow down for a second here and say, who's surprised? When you take somebody who is, quite obviously, sexually deviant, would it surprise you, or should it surprise you, that they're also sexually deviant in this other way, as in, they are pedophilic? It shouldn't. Or that they're abusive to children. And to, I mean, I don't think it should surprise us, but nowadays there's this thing that we have going where we have to pretend that we've got blinders on. We have to pretend that when we put a child into the arms of I don't know, a homosexual couple or a transgender individual that we don't expect anything to happen. And we're seeing the ramifications of that over time. That's not to say that, of course, I feel like I have to put this in, that's not to say that every heterosexual couple is perfect or even that there aren't pedophilic ones. Of course there are. But we do know that when we have identified people as being um, sexually deviant in the first place, then we have more reason to think that that's going to extend into other areas and that they're not good influences for children. We used to know this, we used to be able to say this, and now, because of political correctness being what it is, this is one of those things that's verboten in our modern society. It shouldn't be, and as we, as we surrender and show our duty to speak about such things, we surrender our children to such people to the same degree. This entire um, thing was only unraveled because of anonymous, an anonymous tip from a community member that resulted in this investigation and finally this child being rescued and taken away from these people. And the child has now been adopted by relatives, thankfully. 
so there was um, a sort of resolution, but the entire thing should have never have happened. A child should be protected from people like this. And similarly, we shouldn't have children going inside of, you know, strip bars or being subjected to such people in trans story hour kind of environments. This is all stuff that, honestly, common sense ought to take us to. And nowadays, we're more li likely to engage in a kind of collective cowardice than to speak the truth that ought to be spoken.